Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Jeff Shepard, and thank you so much for joining us today. We have a powerful, powerful episode with an even more powerful guest by the name of Mr. Rashad Mills. And today, our goal is very simple. PSP, it's not a game. PSP, and we're going to kind of elaborate on what that means, but I, I definitely want to introduce our viewers to Mr. Rashad Mills. Uh, so first of all, uh, welcome, Rashad. Please uh, address the, uh, the audience. Hello, everyone. My name is Rashad Bowtie Mills, and as always, I like to tell everybody, uh, don't forget the messages that I bring to you, and certainly don't forget the bow tie. And Jeff, I'm so <laughs> elated and happy to be here. I'm, I'm just excited. Uh, my excitement level is like at 150% right now, I'm telling you. And if you ever have a chance to talk to this brother, you can, you can just feel the energy. O over the phone, we were just creating this energy, <laughs> and, and I think it was just... Um, and excitement to just be here at this place. And we actually talked about that when we, we sat down today. It's just amazing how when you have a goal in mind, when you have something to aspire to, you just get this extra energy. You just get this extra vibe, this vibration in your life. And this is what we want to provide to you, to our viewers. So before we even tackle PSP, I just want to give uh, our viewers a background because you know it is not a game and sometimes life can be hard and you actually <laughs> showed me what we, we were discussing it wasn't easy growing up so could you just share with some of our viewers because I think they'll be able to relate that it was not always easy to be here and before we even go there let's let's first of all talk about his accomplishments he has a master's degree CEO of his own company, and he even works with, with, uh, with at-risk youth. Uh, so he's definitely doing a lot of things in the community, doing a lot of good. But could you at least just share your background story and just let them know what you had to go through to get to this, to this point where you are now? Absolutely. Um, born and raised here in Baltimore, Maryland. Okay. Um, I grew up in a household um, not too far from actually where we're shooting now, strangely enough. I'm um, in Baltimore, Maryland. I grew up in a household where my mother was a single parent. My mm. father at the time was actually sentenced to 60 years in prison for wow. robbing banks. So at the age of two to the age of 21, my father was always incarcerated. Wow. So I actually, for the first time I met him, without the confinements of a facility, he was actually 21 years old. So throughout that period of my life, I got into a lot of things that resulted from lack of having a father in the house. You know, selling drugs, I'm not... Um, by any stretch of the imagination, I'm not happy to say it, but I did it. Right. Um, just doing a lot of things that really didn't make sense at the time. Um, and it actually led to me being shot in 1997. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, again, that was a result of not really, in my mind, of not having a father figure in the house. And women can't raise men. So when I graduated from Woodlawn in 1995, again, you know, a series of, you know, mishaps in the streets, being shot. And eventually I decided that I needed to turn my life around. So in 1999, I enrolled in Benedict College, a small HBCU in South Carolina. I stayed okay. there a year, and from that time, you know, I didn't even fall in love. I tripped into love, <laughs> so I met a young lady that was at the school, and then I eventually moved to Camden, New Jersey, went to Jamaica, and got married. I'm um, a series of odds and ends jobs, but I always knew that I wanted something more out of my life. Right. So eventually, I came back to um, Baltimore, graduated from Morgan State University in 2006 with my BA in broadcast journalism. And I was a sports broadcaster, and I was in Bend, Oregon at the time from 2006 to 2008, and then another mistake. At the time, I was still battling alcoholism. I actually had a DUI, and they sent me back mm. to Baltimore. And I was, if I could tell you how heartbroken I really was, because being in front of a microphone trying to help people, um, that's a passion of mine. Right. And at the time, I was you know, a huge sports fan, so I was at my ideal job, and I blew it. Mm. by not making the right choice. So eventually it led me back to coming back to Baltimore, finding a passion of working with young, with young people, which I'm doing now, graduating from Morgan State University and within probably the last year or so, rediscovering that passion to, to help people. So that's kind of uh, my background in a nutshell. And I just, I love how God works because, you know, sometimes when we're in that struggle, sometimes when we're in you know, that, that tough spot in our lives, we, we, wind, we wind up asking, why me? Why me? And someone great told me, why not you? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's what you grow into that makes you who you're destined to be. So sometimes we try to avoid or try to, you know, diminish or, or suppress a lot of those things that happen in our past, but really when we embrace it, mm -hmm. it really makes us who we are. So I really appreciate you even going back to that and saying, hey, you know what, I'm not proud of it, but this is who I am. This is mm -hmm. part of you know, my, my journey. Mm -hmm. So um, again, for those of you that are out there who may be struggling with something, right, whether it is you know, drugs or alcohol or, or whatever that may be, there's always hope. 
there's always hope. And that brings us into our topic. You know, PSP, it's, <laughs> it's not a game. And we, we're, we're laughing because we, we, we're discussing it. We spend it off of uh, the, the PlayStation Portable. But it, it really what it is, it's purpose, spirituality, and passion. Mm -hmm. Having those three key elements in your life can make a dramatic, dramatic difference. And this is something that Rashad speaks to all the time, finding your purpose, finding spirituality, and finding passion. And would you just care to elaborate on how you use those three things in your life and how you teach others to do the same, that, 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 very, that message that you're always uh, discussing? I use them every day. Um, I use those three things every day, and they actually make up who I am right now as mm. we're having this conversation. The purpose part, as for a, a period when I was actually drinking and I was involved in almost uh, self-harm, because that's what alcoholism is, it's self-harm. You're trying to find something in your life that is missing. Right. So you're using that alcohol. It, it becomes this great facade because I didn't have a purpose. Mm. And when I've rediscovered what my purpose is, to be able to use my gift to help people, my life instantly changed. Mm. Um, and I'll just spin off of that as it relates to that, that part of alcoholism, the purpose, and then spirituality. The last time that I actually had a drink, I, I remember it vividly. And when I went to sleep that night, Jeff, and I was just telling the producers this prior to coming on the air, I asked God, God, I never want to have a drink again because I know it's not good for me. Mm. Never have had a drink again. That's the spirituality piece. And I think when people realize, and you don't have to subscribe to any religion at all, because that, that's, that's not the point of the show, but from a spirituality perspective, I think when you understand there's something bigger and right. greater than yourself, right. that also changes your life because, again, just being here today and just sharing some of the background stories, I know that it was something bigger and greater than Rashad. Right. There were things in my life that I said, why didn't this relationship work? Why didn't this job work? And if those things had to work, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. I wouldn't be here. And, and again, that's the spirituality piece. And the passion, passion to me is if you're going to do it, don't do it at 110%. Don't even do it at 120. And that, that sounds good. To me, my number is 150. Mm. Because there are a lot of passionate people that they can do a 110, 120, 130. And I'm trying to beat them all in, in terms of my passion level for what I do. Like right. you have to do it to the death. Right. Whatever that is. Right. And if I have the opportunity to speak in front of people, I kind of joke with people. They say, Rashad, what's your next speaking engagement? I can say, man, it could be in front of a three-month-old baby. <laughs> and I'm going to speak with the same passion right. if I'm right. talking to a stadium of 30,000 people because right. I'm passionate and I'm really involved in what I'm talking about. So that's, that's the passion piece. But I, I live those every day, some form of fashion. And, you know, you make such a great point. And I actually want to come back to... The, the spirituality piece, because I think a lot of people out there are feeling that they're going through something, that they're not where they want to be in life for whatever reason. Um, and it may be a relationship. It may be a job circumstance. I mean, people always aspire for more. And I think the one thing that we need to realize is that we're a part of something greater. Absolutely. So when we... Because a lot of times, and, and I've done this myself, trying to fix certain things, trying to control certain things that don't necessarily need to be controlled. Mm -hmm. So when we can learn how to submit to that greater cause, not even really having to understand what it's about or where, where it's going because that's not for us to decide. Mm -hmm. We're a part of something great. And when we understand that and we have that submission, Lord, I don't want to drink anymore. Take this away from mm -hmm. me. Submitting to that greater power. And, and again, I, like you said, you don't have to buy into any specific religion, but just understanding that the fact that you're breathing, the fact that you're alive, mm -hmm. the fact that we're on this show talking to you and, and you could be in a different state, a different country, mm -hmm. the fact that we're sitting right here is presence that there is a greater energy. There is something greater out there. So you have to start there and learning how to submit your doubts and your fears and your, mm -hmm. your current circumstances to that greater power because that's, that's what's going to open up certain doors. You, can, you can't see a lot of things when you're going through that stress, mm -hmm. when you're right there in that battlefield. So being able to take a step back, being able to pass it on to something that you can have faith in and believe in, that's going to give you the, the energy and, and the, it's going to open the doors for something greater. Mm -hmm. One of the things that you just mentioned, I just want to go back to it really quickly, is the fact that you're alive. So I actually, uh, about three weeks ago, I literally Googled how many people die each day. Mm. 
And um, I know it sounds strange to the listeners. I mean, to the viewers, it might actually sound strange. And I think the number was uh, roughly 150 so thousand. Mm. And I begin to really think about it from a perspective that whoever, again, you guys subscribe to, and even if it's nobody, but out of 150 thousand people, potentially maybe more, right. depending on what's going on in our world, you're one of those that somebody other than yourself, because you don't hit the, you may hit the alarm clock, but Jeff doesn't have the power to wake Jeff up every day. It's right. something bigger and greater than you. And out of all of those people, somebody woke you up. Mm. So there's a purpose for your life simply because somebody woke you up. If you didn't have a purpose, you wouldn't have woke up. Yeah. I mean, it's a simple concept, but when I began to put the numbers to it, I said, wow, 150,000 people yeah. die every day. And somebody woke me up, then I, I have to live with a purpose. And, and you know, it, it's, it's so funny because even as an adolescent, and, you know, we've all had a past, and I remember just drinking and driving when I, when I was young. And I got into a terrible accident. I mean, a terrible accident. And to the point where when my mother came to pick me up, she, she just could not believe that I was even alive. That's how smashed up the car was. So the fact that, and I, I mean, I got, I was a little bloody, but no broken bones, no nothing. I just, I was actually walking. I was coherent. So the fact that all of these things happen in our lives, but yet, like you said, someone still chooses us to, to, uh, to actually wake up, someone actually chooses us, mm -hmm. there is a purpose. And that kind of goes into one of the concepts is, well, who is actually in control of your life? Are, are, you, are you controlling that purpose? Are you letting outer forces? Are you letting other circumstances, things that aren't to your benefit, but more so to your detriment, are you letting those things control your life? So wh what would you say to someone who, who is looking for that, for that extra calling, who is, who's looking to take back that control, who, who feels lost, who wants more, um, but doesn't even know where to start. What would you say to that person? Let's, let's continue with the analogy of the PSP, right? Okay. It's this portable controller. So when you think about this, anything that happens on this game, you physically, because of your hands, you're in control of it. Correct. So the same concept will work within somebody's life. Where you are in your life right now, good, bad, or indifferent, it's a direct result of the control that you have on your life. Now, of course, there are some circumstances that are way beyond our control. Absolutely. Sometimes you may have a car accident. Sometimes it's financial situations, relationships, whatever the case may be. But overall, you're in control of your life based on the decisions you make. Let's stick with the video game analogy. John Madden, 2016 to 17, right. is probably about to hit, right? And a lot of kids will say they, they're playing the game. So these kids play the game on a computer, but they're playing against somebody else that they can't see. If they win or lose that game, it's at their control. Right. And if you are in control of your life and you're doing everything that you should be at your fullest potential, a lot of things will work out well. Now, I'll personalize it. Um, a lot of things that happened in my life didn't work out the way that I wanted them to mm. because I really wasn't in control. I was letting outside forces, outside forces, alcohol, maybe in the wrong mm. environment. And my mindset, all these controlling factors, I had the controller in my hand, but I really didn't have the control because I let outside forces influence it. Now that I'm fully in control of my life, every day I wake up and I have that controller in my hand, right. I'm in control of it because of the decisions that I make. So if wow. I win to lose, right, if I win at the game of life, it's because I'm in control. And when you are really in control, no matter what the outside forces do, if I'm playing against Jeff in a video game and we can't see each other, you're in your living room and I'm in my living room mm -hmm. and I'm in control, right? And I'm doing everything sh that I should do and I'm working at 150%, regardless of what you do on the other end, I'm a win because I'm in, f I'm in control of my life. And you know, that's just so powerful because it is about understanding your level of control because mm -hmm. no matter where you are in your life it's because of certain circumstances that you have either controlled or not controlled but either way it's still in your hands and, and let me just jump in one point part of that control it starts here it absolutely starts here. um i know I'm, I'm speaking for a lot of people that are watching now and again i, I want to personalize because i don't want to tell anything people anything that i haven't been through my life changed when i started to think differently and and it's here and, and I tell the kids all the time, uh, that some of the young people that I work with, your, your mind is everything. So if, in fact, that you, your mind says, I want to do something that's not right, your body is going to follow suit. Mm. But when your mind says, I want to do the right thing, your body doesn't have a choice but to follow. Absolutely. It's, it's just that simple. And, and again, going back to that being, 
being a part of something greater than yourself. If your mind controls your body and you're submitting your mind, your will to that greater purpose, then you know hmm. that you're headed towards that, that greatness. You know? So um, again, I, I love that analogy of keeping it in your hands and, and staying in control because that's what it's about. You may not be able to control your relationship. Mm -hmm. You may not be able to control your job or your boss. You can control how you handle it. You can control how you react to those situations. You can, you can control how you react to, I'll give you a perfect example. My man right here, Rashad. So even today, we're, we're sitting here getting ready to come to the radio show. And, you know, we start at 7. So he gives me a call about 6.05. Jeff, I'm two minutes away. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm not going to be there for, for at least another half an hour, right, Rashad? Well, no, you know what? I don't play with time. I don't let, and really to, to, to kind of substitute some words just so it can be a little bit more clear, I don't let time control me. I make sure I control time. And can we control the, the minutes mm. and, the, and, and the seconds? No. But we can control when we show up. We can control what's on our schedule and what's not on our schedule. And, and I have to be honest, man, I was extremely impressed because that's even something that I even need to, to, to work on even right now is the time, you know. So um, just understanding that no matter what, there are certain things that we're doing to either control our life or to, to lose that control. And I love the fact that you mentioned that. And I wasn't even thinking about that, but that's a great point. So I like to get to places early. Number one, I feel like I'm in control if I'm early. So think about the outside forces. If there was an accident, I'm still okay right. because I'm ahead of schedule. I'm ahead of schedule. If something happened to my car, I'm still okay because I'm ahead of schedule. Those are the outside forces. Exactly. But I'm in control because I created that. I created that, that part. And once you create the fact that you're in control, you can, I mean, eliminate a lot of outside forces. No matter what happened coming down this road, I was okay because I was way ahead of schedule. That's the control piece. Now, mm. if I wasn't in control and I was running 10 minutes, maybe 10 minutes, I had to speed. I had 10 minutes yep. left. And I had to fly. If there was an accident, a long light, an elderly lady walking across right. the street, I don't right. know. Right. right. I'm not in control. So those outside forces, they'll be in control because I allowed it. And it's so, it's so interesting that you even said that. And let's, let's kind of stay there because I, I love where this is going. When you are losing that control, when, when you're not taking that control and you, you open yourself up to those outer consequences mm -hmm. and, and the outer forces, what happens when you are late and then that lady comes in the street or there's an accident? Your body immediately starts to get stressed, right? And you start to Ooh. feel this, 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 this feeling, this, this irritation. You're, you're irritable. You're, you know, you're creating mm -hmm. this negative energy, and you may not even realize it. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody might say something, and you snap right at them, you know, and, and you're just creating, excuse me, that negative mm -hmm. energy. So when you're in control, you, you not only are controlling your circumstances, but you're controlling your emotions as well, and that can dictate whether you're making a connection or destroying one. You know, what if that... What if that old lady was someone he had meant to put, you know, meant to help you and you got out, you had so much time, you got out the car and helped her out. You know, I, I was actually at the grocery store today with my daughter and the, the lady actually just winded up offering my daughter uh, a candy bar. Mm -hmm. So, you know, no problem. I mean, I, I, she was very nice and um, I wanted to make sure that, that my daughter saw good things in, in the community as well. And... I had some extra time and I waited outside to make sure I carried her bags to the car and wasn't expecting anything, wasn't really um, doing it for any other reason other to, than to show her my gratitude, but it just made me feel so much better. And, my, and I know my daughter saw that, so no, I know that I'm passing that positivity on. So I just really like your analogy about taking control of those circumstances. Mm -hmm. we're, we're powerful, very powerful. Yeah, and it's important too, and you, and you mentioned something else, and it feels like we could stay on this forever. So many gr good things are actually grown out of this, the emotion part of control, like emotionally. Um, sometimes I think when people are not in control of things, the emotions will get the best of you. Absolutely. And when your emotions get the best of you, that, that can hamper a lot that you're trying to do. Again, let's take the analogy. If I'm running late, right, somebody, you know, it's, it's an accident. I'm mad at somebody that was potentially in a life-threatening accident. Right. Right. And I'm mad at them, right. but when you go back to it, whose fault is it? Right. It's Rashad's if he was running late. So I come into the studio, emotionally, I'm all over the place, I'm upset. Jeff, what's, what's going on? And I'm really upset. And then in turn, when it's time to deliver a message of positivity and hope, 
and just good spirits to people, I can't even do that because I'm emotionally Not distraught from something exactly. that happened. And when you go back to it, who was the catalyst for it? It was Rashad because I wasn't in control of a situation. I was running late. And it, it's, it's amazing that we're having this conversation because as I talk to people and I, I love helping people, that's, that's my calling. But a lot of times, that's the one thing that they're, that they're not really seeing is how they are creating their, their own stress, their own problems. It's, well, it's this person, or my boss won't you know, allow me to, to grow, or you know, they, they always are coming up with reasons. And trust me, when you, when you look at it from their perspective, I understand what they're going through. But what I want, to, to, I want the audience tonight to get uh, an understanding is that you do have that control. Mm -hmm. you, you are playing your own life game. You are the director of your own life. Mm -hmm. So you can either complain about it and, and keep losing the control to all of those outside factors, the things that you can't control anyway, or you can get laser focused on the things that you can control. And those in turn will start to dictate and open up the doors that you truly are seeking. So again, who is in control? I really want you to make sure you understand this. Who really is in control of your life? When you woke up, yes, a greater power woke you up. What did you do with that opportunity? Mm -hmm. Did you take control of the day? And if you didn't, plan to take control tomorrow. See, there's always, you can always you know, have a fresh start, so to speak. The reset. Yeah, you, look, you can reset. hit that reset button, right? right? <laughs> reset, reset, perfect and, segue. And, and let's even get right into that, because on the PlayStation, there's a reset button. You know, if, if I lose or if, I, if I'm sitting there um, about to die in a mission or, or whatever the, the game is that I'm playing, I have the opportunity to hit the reset button. Now, we can't reset our entire lives, but we can take advantage of that reset button. And I know you I know you about to say something. So I'm going to go ahead and let you start. No, 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 no that's fine. I just want to get this while it's on the tip of my tongue. In terms of resetting, you can't reset your entire life. I no. can't go back and reset 38 years of Rashad Mills' life. But no. guess what? Every day that I wake up, that's a new opportunity to reset my life. So for those of you that may be going, some, going through some trials and tribulations as we speak, you can't go back to last year. But what you can do, you can learn from last year and use that until this current day right now. And every day is an opportunity to reset your life, mm. reset the way you think, reset things in your life. You can do that on a daily basis. Now, again, depending on how far along that you were in that game, that reset button may be a little bit harder. Depending mm -hmm. on the mistakes that you made, maybe, and, and stand with this video game analogy, maybe the level that you have achieved, it's going to be harder to reset, but you can reset it. Right. Um, and it just it popped up in my mind. Maybe you just went through a divorce. You went through a, a terrible divorce, right? And financially, it left you in a bad place. That's tough to reset from but you can reset from it. When can you reset from it? The very moment that you wake up. Not even waking up, it could be the next second mm. that you decide in your brain, I need to reset and do something differently. Now, it, it's important that when you reset, that you're not playing the same game that you did before. Ah. Now, if you reset your life and you stay on the same boy, then you're doomed for the same results. We all know, you know, Einstein's uh, quote about, you know, insanity doing the same right. thing. Over and over again, expecting a different right. result. So, I mean, you have the opportunity to reset your life every single, I'm not even going to say day, I mean, literally every second, because it takes one thought to change the entire world around. And you know what? I want to kind of come back to that point, because sticking with the, the PSP analogy, if I am, let's just say I'm playing, and look, I don't play many video games, so I'm going to go back old school, Mario, you know, and um, I'm, I'm playing an old enemy, school. or I'm playing a, a, a board, and I, I die. And, but then I go back and play that same board the same exact way without any change, without any kind of uh, strategy. I just play it the same way. I'm pretty much guaranteed to have the same results. You're gonna so die how, in the same manner. So how did, how did you get past those hard levels? How did you be, beat King Cooper? You had to start really mm -hmm. having a strategy. You really had to start understanding, okay, well, if I do this, that's gonna happen. And if I don't do this, this will happen. And he's gonna breathe fire every three seconds. So I have to make sure I duck. You have to start to strategize in order mm -hmm. to reset. 
I like that. You're going to have to strategize in order to reset. You can't just reset and just hope things will magically go away or, or get better. You're going to have to reset with a strategy. And once you, like you said, I think that's why it could be at any second because as soon as your mind realizes that strategy, then you also have the opportunity to change the game and change the, the outcome uh, of your life. Mm -hmm. And part of what the reset is resetting your life. You have to be very real with yourself. Mm. Um, and you had mentioned it earlier, and the word accountability just popped up. So many times when people are going through things and we want to change something in our life, we're not very real with ourselves and we're not very accountable. Well, I could beat this level of Mario if something else happens. No, be accountable. Yeah. If you change some of the things that you're doing, you can get to the next level of Mario. Exactly. Um, you have to be real with yourself. Sometimes we're not real, man. And again, I, I want to personalize it for people to have opportunity to tune in and watch this tonight so you understand it's coming from a real place. Jeff, when I was going through the worst periods of my life, drinking to cover up things, I thought I could continually do that day in and day out, and I would change emotionally, physically, financially. It never happened until mm. I was accountable. Now, luckily for me, part of my accountability came with one of my great friends, and he said, man, your entire life can be changed if you stop drinking. Mm. And once I was accountable enough to reach out again to that, that higher power, it changed, yeah. and I didn't have to continually hit the reset button over and over and over again. Now, prior to being accountable and very real with Rashad, man, I hit that reset button uh, 4,500 times. Every mm. time I went out to drink, well, this is my last drink. I know my life will change. No. All right. No. Right. I had to be, you know, I, I had to be accountable. Yep. But I was hitting the reset button all over again, but I wasn't changed. I wasn't had no changed. strategy. No strategy. And no strategy. You, you made two great points that I hope the audience is getting out of this. One, you, you do have to be accountable. I think we, we have to have a certain level of accountability. And I, I don't want to get too deep or too far off the path, but I think that's one of the things that that society is growing away from, you know, mm -hmm. with the whole Facebook and all of this digital stuff, we were able to to not to get away without being accountable you know i can blame it on a mistake or i can just post things and not really think about this you have to be accountable for what you want not only what you want in life but where you are in life mm -hmm. you know it's look things happen things are going to happen and, and just like things happen to Rashad, things happen to me things happen to you we we all have a, a life i mean that's what life is it, it is a struggle Right. We things happen. But you have to understand that you are exactly where you are right now because of who you are right now and the decisions that you have made right now. So if you want a different outcome, then you must become different. You must become different in your thinking. You must become different in your actions. And you made such a great point. And I don't think I've heard of any success story and I'm, I'm going through it in my mind right now. I don't think I've heard of any success story that they got there on their own. Yeah. It it takes someone to reach down and to 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 you know have you see that bigger picture in yourself. A lot of people say, you know, I had someone that believed in me when I didn't even believe in me. You know, when you were drinking and you were down, it took a friend, a real friend, right? Not your drinking friend, mm -hmm. but a real friend <laughs> who not the one that's like, hey, come on and get a drink. <laughs> But the one who said, you know what, if you stop drinking, your life will change. And it took that friend to actually, you know, st stop you in your tracks and really make you start to evaluate what you really want. And you can't do it alone. We need people. We do need each other. I'm sorry. I no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I was over here and I'm, and I'm, I'm just smiling. And, and I was smiling from an unbelievable sense of just happiness. Because when you were talking about the, the drinking piece, I'm going to be very, very, very honest at this point. Man, I had um, a guy that's uh, still a very good friend to me now. And, um, you know, when I was in that point of really not wanting to drink, he would still invite me out for mm -hmm. drinks. It doesn't make him a bad guy. Right, right. It, it doesn't make him a, a bad guy. But when I think back, sort of my best friend now, and I actually call this guy an angel at this point, he, he saw things in me that I didn't. He said, mm -hmm. you need to get back to your gift. And I said, no, I can never get back. You need to get back. Mm. And, and there's so many things that if I told you that, that I'm going through now, positive things, that he was sort of the, the push. The catalyst, me. right, right. It's, it's unbelievable. And, and, and again, this goes back to the spirituality piece because I believe that he was placed there 
for that very reason. Absolutely. And I mean, it's, it's unbelievable how, again, that purpose, spirituality, that passion, they all connect. I mean, they, they all connect. But and I'm sorry, I had that huge grin because I, when you just, no no, you and, just and it's great that, because it, just, it, it it's real, and that's what I want people to understand that it it is going to take just it's going to take more than you. One, let's let's talk about it. You're part of something greater, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to have to take greater than your current circumstance. And and a lot of times, we and even myself, you know, when when I made the plunge to to leave. Uh, school and really didn't have a, a financial background or, or a financial backing, I'm like, okay, I'm going to control this. I'm going to get this done. I'm going to, to make this. Mm -hmm. And I fell flat on my face. <laughs> and the reason being is because we can't sit here and try to act like we can control everything in our lives and like we just have it all going on. We have to make sure, one, that we're submitting to that greater, that greater cause We've got to have our purpose. We've got to be connected spiritually. But at the same time, understanding that people are meant to either help us or hurt us. And you need to make sure that you're, you're choosing those, that, that, you know, that circle wisely. Like you said, that best friend, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of was a catalyst. He believed in you when you didn't even believe. And, and sometimes we need that. We need people to fill our buckets. We need people to, to see us mm -hmm. for the, the, not the people that we are, but the people that we can be. You know, uh, there, there's a great saying, if you treat a man like he is, he will become worse. But if you treat a man like he can be, he will become great. Mm. And it's just so true. Sometimes we just get so caught up in what we see now that we, we, we don't even lend out a helping hand. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I can see the passion and I can hear the passion over the phone. So if there's anything that I can do or, or any, anything that we can do at, at Power Purpose to help you out, I, I'm, I'm willing to do that because I see the passion. And that's what we need to start creating, uh, uh, an atmosphere of people who are aspiring to help others achieve. And um, look, I know we only have a few minutes, but I want to definitely make sure that we leave it off with you. So do you have any closing remarks or anything that you want to just say to the audience? I just encourage everybody every day, no matter what you're going through in your, your life at this present moment, and I'll say this and I'll kind of wrap it up very quickly, just think of life as a tunnel, and you're in the middle of the tunnel. When you're in the middle of a tunnel, the waters are deep and dark, and you can't see light at the end of the tunnel, but you just got to keep going because there's light at the end of every tunnel. Mm. And if you want to go back, and turn around, that's the beginning. You never want to go back to the beginning of mm -hmm. something. You want to progress forward. So life is really like a tunnel. And when you're going through things, you're probably in the middle of the tunnel. Just keep taking steps. Just keep taking steps and understand that, um, that it's something bigger and greater than yourself. Also understand that once you find your purpose, your life changes just like that. And then once you find that purpose, do it with a passion. And I got to say this, Jeff, I, I love the fact that you mentioned the bucket. Mm -hmm. And once you get to the point where you are able to help yourself, because people have yes. poured into your bucket, yes. then in turn, it's only right that you take your bucket and, and not pour it, pour it on somebody, dump it on the <laughs> next person. Because my best friend, he dumped his bucket onto me, and right. now I can dump my bucket onto other people. Right. And being on platforms like this with you guys, providing positive energy to somebody else, because I'm sure somebody is positively affected by what we talked about today. Absolutely. So that's... Absolutely. And you know what? First of all, I just want to thank you for being on our show. Thank uh, you it, for it's been me. a... A tremendous session, and, and I know that my viewers got a lot uh, out of this. And, you know, if, if anyone wants to, you know, reach out for you for speaking engagements or, or anything like that, how can, how can they get a hold of you? Um, they can actually email me at RashadSpeaks at RashadMills.com. So everybody that's connected with the social media platforms, which uh, everybody in the world, I think they are at this point. At this point um, yes. Please follow me on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube, Rashad Bowtie Mills. Every Friday morning, I provide you with happy hour, just an injection of positivity at 5 a.m. Um, I'm coming with the same passion. It's only in a much shorter version. Um, and I always tell you my, uh, my sort of my, my funny line is, don't forget the message, nor forget the bow tie. That's right. And, and look, he is the man with the bow tie. Actually, I, I really like that bow tie, man. And I'm so thankful that, that you even just came to drop some knowledge. And I just want to leave off by saying this. First of all, I hope that you definitely received what we were trying to, to, to give you guys today. And, and that's one, purpose, spirituality, passion. Three key things that if you implement these things, that it will have a dramatic change on your life. Purpose, knowing what it is, having that goal, 
whatever it is, connecting it to something greater than yourself. Understand it is not yours to control. It is not. You may plant the flower in the backyard, but that doesn't mean that it's yours, right? Because that flower is not just meant for you to feed off. It's meant for the insects. It's meant for the, mm -hmm. the soil. It's meant to get the energy from the sun, something greater that you can't provide. So stop trying to control the flower and just be a part of the growth of the flower. Dang, hold up. Where did that come from? I don't know. But that would, that, don't stop trying to control the flower and be a part of the growth and, and understand it. that's going to be uh, bigger than yourself. And then finally, that passion, that passion, that passion, mm. that passion, not just 100%, 150, do it to the point, and I love what Rashad is saying, and I just want to make sure you're getting this. Do it to the point where you become the passion, where, where mm. it is just you mm. on a daily basis. Doesn't matter if I'm talking to, you know, my boss or a three-month-year-old baby, like Rashad said, mm -hmm. it, the passion is going to come out. And, and I truly believe this, and I want to just add this. I truly believe that when you add those three elements and you do it from a point of, of honesty and love, that you have no choice but to attract the things that you really desire. And mm -hmm. that's what I want to leave you off with today. And, and until next week, I just want you to take charge of your thoughts, take charge of your actions, and then take charge of your destiny. This is Jeff Shepard signing off.